How you doing, Mel? Dude, I'm so good, actually. I talk mm -hmm. like this now because I've been watching like a lot of pop punk music videos from back in the day. Uh, because now I'm like unironically getting into uh, making my own pop punk music. And so I was doing my research by watching old Fall Out Boy music videos. And I was like, wow, it's actually, you know, if you want to feel like drugs, uh, you, if you want to feel like you're on drugs sober, watch that shit but that's anyway what, how are you that's what pop punk is that's like blink 182 some 41 fallout boy that's pop punk yeah or at least that's my interpretation my understanding of yeah, it yeah, yeah. okay um, yeah, yeah fuck with that yeah who doesn't like a blink 182 it's like fucking blink 182 fucking rules it's funny i was um much more i was never super into blink 182 but i, I was way more into my chemical romance yeah. uh just Basically, That's like anything. emo though, right? My Chemical Romance is like emo. Like we're going more into the like kids with like a little bit too much eyeliner. They're like a little bit more sad, a little, more, a little bit more screaming, more emotion going on. I feel like pop punk is kind of like they. Is you still got the punk values of like fuck the establishment? We're skateboarding. Uh, where emo is more like fuck the establishment, but because we're sad, not because we don't give a fuck. It's because we're like Bleh. they're like moody yeah. teenager kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I know that when I looked up the Wikipedia last night while I was stoned, that it was all on the same page, but they were like, yeah, there's like pop punk and then there's like emo pop punk or whatever, and the lines mm -hmm. are blurred, but you no, know, you're absolutely right. And like when I was watching music videos, I was like, yeah, Blink-182, uh, Blink they seem like they're having a better time than some of the other ones, but oh, hey, what's... Sure. Uh, where are you, by the way? What is this oh, background? Yeah. Full on different background for the audio, uh, or not audio listeners, the, for the uh, video viewers. I'm currently in Austin. I'm in Austin, Texas. So I was doing a weekend out here. Um, so we're doing some shows out here in Austin, and uh, I decided to stay for the week because Austin fucking rules. Really fun mm -hmm. city. And like in terms of comedy, it's like one of the top comedy cities now. So you can get tons of stage time out here. I actually did the, the crew show at um, the Mothership last night, which was good. So I got to get in front of some of the people there. Um, slowly, but uh, slowly trying to to increase my influence at that club because that's like one of the best premier clubs in the country right now. The Comedy Mothership is cool as hell. That's like Rogan's Club. Uh, and like, they, I think they took an old movie theater and they turned it into a comedy club and it has like these cool, like lights on the outside and the inside has all this like old, like 1960s wallpaper and, and like, it, yeah, it's just a fucking vibe in there. They have two rooms. I think one's called the little boy and the big guy. Uh, mm -hmm. I've only been, I've only done shows in the, in the little boy. Uh, um, that sounds like constellations. Like little boy, big, big guy, little dipper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, is this your first time um, performing in Austin, or have you performed in Austin no, before? No, I've been. Uh, this is my third time coming out here. So, like, I started coming out here in like May of last year, or maybe before that. I think I came in April. Yeah, because I did shows in Tempe in April. Came right mm -hmm. after the Tempe shows, and then I had shows in May uh, in in uh, Dallas, in Houston, Dallas, and then we drove down after and did, did another week, and then I was just in. Where the fuck was I just? Uh, Fort Wayne. Um, but I had the shows in Austin, so I came down to these Austin shows, decided to stay the week, do a bunch of gigs, hang out, do a bunch of stuff. And then uh, I take off from here to Raleigh after this, uh, North Carolina. So it would be a big stark change. I don't know what Raleigh is, but I know it's not a city known for like a bunch of young, hot people running around. Like the whole vibe of like Austin is kind of like an extended dive bar. It's fucking awesome. There's like this grittiness to the city. This mm -hmm. like kind of like, uh, like not granola is the right word, but yeah, like a little punk rock kind of vibe. Like we're doing our own thing. We're keeping it weird, which I really, really like. I'm matching with a lot of chicks who are covered with tattoos on Hinge. And that's uh, that's my vibe. I was just yeah. about to ask what app, but no, Austin was actually the <laughs> first, one of the first places I visited after quitting Google. So mm -hmm. like right after quitting Google, I was like, okay, I've done all of this weird forced international travel disguised as a good time on Instagram, but really I hated it because I was working there, mm -hmm. but now I'm free. And so I was like, I want to go to all the cool live music cities in America. So like right after I quit Google, um, I was, well, I was also making TikToks on my phone. I was just like in a hotel in Austin, similar to the one that you're staying in, um, did like Austin, Nashville, just, and I was just like, yeah. Live music is good. Oh, uh, New Orleans. Um, I was like, yeah, live music is good. Like someone was saying that Austin 
has all the good parts of LA without all of the shitty parts. And mm. even though I've only been once, I can totally see why someone would say that. What I definitely think I like about Austin over uh, over. I like, like a lot of LA. places more than LA. To be honest, yeah. LA is definitely like a, a workplace for me. Yeah, I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not crazy about LA. Like, it, it's just not my vibe of a city. I like. I'm. I don't like anything fancy. I don't like anything expensive. Like, so it's just there's not a lot of things that uh, I really love over there. And it's also a driving city, which I'm not a big fan of either. I like walking cities. So in Austin, great walking city. New York, great yeah. walking city. I want to be able to walk everywhere I go. Um, Dude, or same, transit same. or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's uh it's way more fun. It's way better. I absolutely hate being in a car. I hate driving. Just everything about the experience gives me a disease. Like some sort I just can feel that something is dying within me and slowing down my my metabolism, like making my brain smoother, just anything bad that could happen to the human biology. I just feel myself, you know, deteriorating, deteriorating. See, look, it just happened just now. You're, it, you're like I, away, I stuttered because I started talking about it. But uh, did you party in Austin? And if you did, did you do any drugs while you were partying? in no Austin? No drugs. I haven't done any drugs in Austin, but I've been. Uh, but yeah, definitely partying, drinking. Um, last time I did drugs was when I was in Berlin, which wasn't that long ago. I had a fucking wait a second. Time. Let's clarify what we mean by drugs. It's really mm. interesting because some everyone has a different definition of what drugs are. Because like technically, alcohol is a drug, but yeah. we think of drugs as like illegal. No, it's like oh, not alcohol or cigarettes, like heroin. Um, which yeah. I would do if I were like in old age and dying already and everybody else around me was already dead and i was just and i was just kind of like fuck it but but yeah okay so the last time you did drugs was in berlin yeah last time i did drugs was in berlin and i did like uh i did some mdma and i did uh like a crushed up pink pill that was ecstasy so who knows what was in it um yeah it was a good time not fentanyl Uh, yeah no fentanyl ah whatever you can i think i might be fentanyl proof at this point no i'm just fucking around um Mm -hmm. but uh yeah i all that was in that pill was it was a good time it was fun as fuck uh, but Do you know what the name of the pill was? Fuck no, dude. They it have, was like they keep making new names for pills. I remember back when I was in my hardcore ABG days for yeah. So for people listening or watching who don't know what that is, oh my god, my hair keeps getting stuck in my mouth. Uh, it stands for Asian Baby Girl, and it refers to like a st- a th- the type of <laughs> a stereotypical type of Asian girl who goes to raves a lot. That's and- an Asian Baby Girl. Yeah, it's just called ABG in ABG. the I've never heard Raven. of this. Please, yeah, get, like, fill, fill me in on the whole Asian baby girl lifestyle phase, the whole, whole shebang. Yeah, so Asian baby girl, I mean, I look like one. I mean, people could argue that I'm not short enough to actually be one. It's kind of like, mm. if you just Google Asian baby girl, you'll see a lot of, um, you know, like very pretty, uh, typically, typically petite, you know, Asian girls who are going hard on the raving, wearing like a really like awesome rave outfit um you know dyed hair fake lashes long nails uh just and and the whole thing is and they're and they just like go to raves and are hot and like that's that's the the thing i mean obviously it's a Uh, (laughs) stereotype no no it's it oh it's oh it's a great life and i mean i still have like that the abg is still in me like i i got really into it i think in college because so i um I didn't have a lot of Asian people around me growing up in my childhood. So once I got to Berkeley, not Berkeley, Berkeley College of Music, that would be cool if I were like a music prodigy. But no, I went to like the weird nerd one. Um, there's actually this thing called have you? Uh, there's this thing called Berkeley goggles, and it's a term used. It's like it's like drunk goggles, and um, it's a term used to describe how the big. I mean, I don't personally feel this way, um, I, which I have to say for the podcast. You don't uh, have to hide but, your feelings, Mel. This is your pod. You say whatever the fuck yeah, you, you know want. What, you know here. what? Yeah. It's thing is you know it was really hard to to look at some people during my time there myself included like i was like i was ugly as shit in college like i was just like why you were know? you ugly like, in college what was the breakdown why, why you got uh, well i was um you know i was actually ugly for most of my life i think until recently yeah. um i well you know in college it was like well I had really bad acne and I didn't know that people typically just use money to solve that, which I didn't have. I didn't realize that like, so I was just trying to do it the normal poor person way, which is, you know, doing shit that doesn't work. But, um, 
doing no, no, now shit I'm like, that I don't, doesn't okay. work. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Just like people like try acne wash, and I'm just like, that doesn't work. Like how people get rid of that shit is through uh, hard drugs, like yeah, Accutane you, or um. But you know, my my parents weren't weren't gonna let me do that shit. I couldn't afford um to get like acne facials, which is apparently what everyone else was doing. But anyway, so you know, uh, and I also just like. It was just one of those things where since everybody else was so ugly, and, and this is just when I went there, like, apparently everybody at Berkeley's hot now, because, like, you know, Gen Z is, like, you just understand how to become hot younger, because you just, like, you have access to more information. Like, I, like, my entire life I've, I've been, like, how do I become attractive? How do I become attractive? Um, you know, I'm actually still kind of there, to be honest, uh, but, uh, it, but, I, but I think I've, I've made progress, but, yeah, Berkeley, uh, so Ber- it's funny. You think all the drugs I did at Berkeley would have helped me find people more attractive, but they didn't. Anyway, we'll get there. So Berkeley goggles refers to like how the baseline state of everybody who going there is like so deeply unattractive. So people would say things like, "Oh yeah, he's a Berkeley ten, but a real life three, and, and, like shit like that." And so have you going ever heard- to Berkeley makes you hotter. Fuck no, dude. I didn't even go to fucking college, bro. I never heard of Berkeley goggles. Oh, but no, but, no, 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 not Berkeley goggles. But I'm talking about drunk goggles. But you've heard oh, yeah, of the concept yeah. of goggles. Yes, yeah, of yeah, course. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. so it's. So it's the baseline, like, and everyone, all of my friends who went to a notoriously ugly college, like, they had the same oh, thing. Oh, I like, get what you're insert- saying. Everyone yeah, it was like, at Berkeley is ugly, so that if you go to Berkeley, okay, my, my friend calls this the fucking cantaloupe theory. So she's like, she she uh, is a flight attendant, and everyone, not all, all of the flight attendants, but sometimes they're always like, oh, this pilot's so hot, this pilot's so hot. Mm-hmm. And she's like, he's not really hot. He's just all we have to pick from. She's like, like if you have a, mm-hmm. if you have yes. a plate and there's cantaloupe on it, you go like, oh yeah, cantaloupe, it's great. But if you have a plate and there's like cantaloupe, strawberries, watermelon, fucking whatever, mango, you're like, fuck this cantaloupe. I'm not eating the mm-hmm. cantaloupe because there's all these other options. Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. So mm-hmm. the, so there's just Berkeley's full of cantaloupe. It's just fucking all, all overflowing with cantaloupe. Yeah, and so that's why, uh, and you know, like everybody said it, so I'm not being hateful by saying it and and it's different now my friends who uh went and revisited the campus recently were like everybody at berkeley's hot and i was like cool but however but when i went from 2011 to 2015 it was a very weird time if you went to berkeley uh, in those four years just know that you're ugly that's all you need to know <laughs> is that you're fucking ugly and it's, there's nothing you can do about it unless you're a male and you fixed it she fixed no, it. no no i fixed it the thing is like there is you you can do stuff about it and it's just to be honest, so much of it is just accumulating wealth. Like me coming into entertainment and realizing I was like, oh, so much of what is perceived as attractiveness is like literally just wealth. Cause like, mm-hmm. you know, I, cause like being like a stressed out poor college student, it's like, I didn't, I was like, I have no money or time or sleep. Like, how do I even take care of myself? Cause you're just focused on not failing your fucking CS class and like yeah. making the tuition worth it. Um, however, uh, my favorite part about going to Berkeley was just learning about, all the drugs and that's and that's when i like got really into the drug experience and nice. um nice and uh so actually so my major was cognitive science part of that is neuroscience and part of that in order to graduate i had to take this class called drugs in the brain uh with dr professor presti i don't know if he's still there but it was really interesting so like literally for my major i had to take a class on how like every single drug affects your brain in your and and i was like you know, and while I was taking that class, I was like, wow, it kind of seems like there aren't that many, if at all, negative repercussions for certain drugs. Maybe I should do more of those. Yeah, uh, kids do. Specifically. If anyone, yeah. <laughs> if any young people are listening to this podcast, just know our message today is or else you'll be weird and boring. Okay. Be yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. And uh, you get that through Oh my god, I walked by, uh, well, I was walking to buy a weed yesterday, and on the road, some guy in chalk had written, like, Jesus, 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 meth, 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 <laughs> Jesus saves, meth kills, meth kills, Jesus saves, meth, meth. And it was just, like, insane, like, how long it went for, and I was like, I feel like he was on meth writing this. Yeah, he uh, probably was like, Jesus was talking to him through the meth, and he's like, yo, this meth bad, but Jesus good. Jesus, yeah, good but, drug. Jesus seems like but, a fucking solid drug. Yeah, like, like, uh... And then, you know, in that class, I learned, I was like, oh, you know, psychedelics in general, like, Mm -hmm. you know, acid and psilocybin, like, there's limited research on those, but so much of the research was just positive. It was just like, hey, people report, you know, 
People like report having a good helping. fucking time. Yeah. Yeah. That's- like having it help you on like work through deep issues that you couldn't get through in therapy. Uh, I mean, what was your first time doing a psychedelic? Oh, first time doing a psychedelic. Yo, I think it was. Um, hold on just one sec. Uh, Justin, can you hear that? The fan just turned on. Can you hear that in the background? We could cool, say cool, cool. that it's part of the podcast. It's just like, hey, we want to make you feel like you're on drugs listening to this. Yeah, that that slight sound. That slight sound. Yeah, no. No one else can hear that. Just you, man. You're being so weird right now. Why would you even bring that up? I, no one else is hearing it except that, for you. That's so weird, dude. That's so weird. That slight buzz. Yeah, if, if there's any listeners at home, the La Quinta Inn in Austin, Texas, has some sweet, sweet setups. It's actually the cheapest motel I could find. I'm, I, I fucking love staying at a little cheap, shitty shithole. For one, saving the moolah. It's great. I, uh, but the the AC is on here. And it, so if you hear a buzz in the background, that's fucking me and the fucking AC. I was staying at the Driscoll Hotel before this. The club put me up at the Driscoll, which is like mm-hmm. the nicest fucking hotel in Austin. It like has people do tours, like walking tours through the hotel because it's this old history to it. So that was like fantastic. Fancy as fuck. I made sure I brought a girl back so I could be like, yo, look at this. Like, not having sex in a real nice hotel room is like a fucking waste. But Mm -hmm. you asked Mm -hmm. me first time I did uh, mushrooms. Fuck. First time I did mushrooms. Or acid, any psychedelic. Or any psychedelic. Um, Just uh, like, what was your first trip where you were like, oh my God? I think. mm, And we're ranking these, right? We're ranking the drugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I definitely want to. Talk Let's, about like drugs in terms of, you know, best to have sex on, best to do alone, best to do around your family when, and then have them not know so that you can just tolerate them at Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever. But yeah, so when was your first psychedelic experience? First psychedelic trip. Um, I was, I think it was definitely acid and it was not a good time um my first psychedelic of my first trip doing acid was really bad i was with some friends it was new year's eve we were all supposed to do acid together we all how old were you i was 19 uh Mm -hmm. and everyone i was doing acid with was a few years old than me i was the youngest by far these were all friends i had down in mexico and we like met together got the acid all broke up and went to different places in the Wait, city where, where is this taking place by the way in play all carmen mexico so this is like oh South shit Atlanta. okay where did you I, and where did you get this acid from we got did it from, you get it from one of my friends in the group who like it's oh, okay, pretty got easy it. to get drugs down there um, mm-hmm. so I take oh, the trust acid. Me. Oh, 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 I know. Yeah. I, I'm well aware. Like the last time me and, um, scumbag dad, when we went to Tulum, uh, you can just buy like, fuck, you can just buy opioids over the counter. Yeah. Like in oh, Tulum, yeah. they literally just had a store and it was just like this really long list of like, you want Xanax? We got Xanax. You want, um, mm-hmm. Viagra? We got Viagra. All of it. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but okay. steroids, all that shit. You can get like over the Dude, counter. Yeah. There. And like, you yeah. know, my father's affection, you can get that shit too. Dude, it's yeah. just called, it's Short just plane called right a drug. Away. <laughs> literally. Uh, uh, but- yeah, so I did. We all took the acid separately, and then we're all supposed to meet up later. None of us could, like, get together. I was, like, texting people, like, hey, where are you? No one ended up meeting up with each other. Someone was supposed you to You were bring- alone? I, well, I was at my own, like, event, and then I was supposed to meet up with these guys after. But I'm at an event where no one else is on acid, and I've never taken acid event? before. It was just, like, uh, like not event is the wrong word to use. Like, uh, it was a party. Like, it was just a New Year's Eve mm. party at a bar mm-hmm. with a bunch of people I knew. Um, and I'm on acid, never taken acid before. My friend told me acid is, like, a party drug. And I'm like, not really a party drug. I was supposed to take ecstasy too. Couldn't find ecstasy. One of the people I was supposed to meet up with, I couldn't get the ecstasy from. So mm-hmm. I ended up doing coke. So I did a bunch of coke on acid. Felt mm-hmm. like I had the worst come down because I was like high on coke and then crashing from coke after. But then mm-hmm. the acid intensified that come down that like Mm -hmm. down feeling Mm -hmm. immeasurably i think that's the Mm -hmm. only time i've ever felt depressed and it was just like it was like world ending doom i'm the world's most horrible person everything that was your first time ever feeling depressed yeah well first of all only time i've ever felt depressed okay so first of all i'm uh i'm happy for you also fuck you dude (laughs) Dude, i mean like great for you i was like cool you know that feeling yeah welcome to welcome to most people's reality 24 7 um but i'm actually I, i just i'm actually kidding i think that like it's just more mentally healthy people is better it's just better for everyone overall good for you dude but keep going 
yeah, I just I just was like I just hit this this point where I was like felt so shit. And I kept mm-hmm. doing acid. I did acid like two or three more times before I actually enjoyed it. I was so like insecure and uncomfortable at that point in my life that I um that I I just couldn't enjoy it. I would I, as soon as I got high on it, I was around people and I would just start to feel so negative and start mm-hmm. to like like oh everyone hates me everyone's feeling like this is like extreme pa- negative paranoia i would get mm-hmm. um all of what you're and- saying is literally so relatable and i think people who are into psychedelics and who have tripped multiple times or at least trip semi-regularly like everyone who does that shit has had that experience like a really bad trip um i like similarly i um like my first few, I don't know, even like years of experimenting with psychedelics when I was younger, uh, I was definitely having more bad times and I was having good times. But like mm-hmm. the ego in me was like, I'm going to conquer this. OK, yeah. I'm going to learn how to make this drug my fucking bitch, because acid was also pitched to me by my friend as a party drug. And uh I and like, you know, obviously the, when I was young and uncomfortable and like you're doing it because you're chasing like that good feeling that you had during that one time of the trip. But then right, but now you're in this like weird paranoia psychosis of like, oh, wow, all of this like introspection that I didn't want to have in this setting that's supposed to be fun with my friends. Also, I feel nauseous because those mushrooms tasted really bad, you know, because like back then, um, uh, back then no but literally like you know back then 10 years ago in 2013 at least i didn't have access to all the nice shrooms that they have now because now shrooms are so they're like oh yeah you can just have it in this like little chocolate or this little pill and i was like dude back yeah, then i was like like that i know i was like back then i had like a like i was texting on my burner phone and like meeting some like i would take the bart from like berkeley to some like weird hotel in san francisco so i could buy shrooms in a giant ziploc bag from like some dude dude uh and it was it was just like all the green text and it was like yeah you got to separate like the caps from the shit and then you bring it back to the college students or, or like my friends and we're like god this tastes so bad and oh, you're just yeah. trying to figure out a way to make the shrooms taste better like you no know, my very first acid trip was horrible as well like I, I i've i've tripped a lot i've probably done uh i don't know i've probably done both acid and shrooms each at least like 50 times or something um and yeah. not necessarily the full time so like you know me and scumbag dad we do acid every single time we <laughs> hang out but also go to vegas and i i figured out you know over the years i figured out how to make this shit a party drug but uh yeah no yeah, I, when was I, the you, turning point for you of like yeah this is a party drug now it was well for me like it wasn't so much the ego of like oh i gotta conquer this drug it was everyone has fun on this there's like millions if not billions of people who enjoy this drug and i don't know why i can't and i the first trip was really bad but i think i figured out that it was the coke it was like oh don't do coke and acid those oh i don't do coke coke is low on my list of drugs by the way in terms of overall drugs low i'm like i'm like anti i'm i mean i don't like i'm just like no it does like it's so bad for you and the reward i get from it is so it honestly so coke makes low. me feel bad coke makes me feel like shit like i i don't think i've ever had like a super good time on coke and i think it's because i did the really fun drugs earlier like mm. you know having my first drug experiences be molly and psychedelics was like whoa like this is so fun and happy and amazing so by the time i had tried coke You know, years later, I was like, what? This is so lame compared to all the other drug shit that I've experienced. People are just doing this. And then you meet these people who have only ever done coke and they love it. Right. Like, you know how sometimes you meet people and they're like, I don't like I don't do drugs except for, you know, alcohol, nicotine and coke. And I'm like, those are drugs. What are you talking about? But they're not, you know, colloquially. uh, Everyone has different definitions. But I'm glad that we agree that coke is like we hate coke. Yeah. And it just doesn't blend with psychedelics well at all. And so it was like I just needed to figure out how to do this drug properly. And so I didn't have a good trip on acid until after I had a good trip on mushrooms where mm-hmm. my first, I can't remember if I, for some reason I feel like I did mushrooms before this, but my first memory of having a mushroom trip was by myself. I like mm. ate a little bit of mushrooms. I was at, I've told this story before, not in this pot, I don't think, but um, I have I ate like a little bit of mushrooms. I was at a show and my idea was I was gonna- Wait, do... I need to know the context. Like how old are you? What's the show? Uh, were you performing, I'm... watching? I need the setting. 
Yeah, so like think of like a shitty open mic in Toronto, mm-hmm. Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's probably like 20 comics in the audience. That's the whole audience. I picked up 12 grams of, or no, I think it was 20. I picked up 20 grams of mushrooms um, for me and another person. Um, and I went on, st- before I went on stage, I ate what I thought was 0.5 grams of mushrooms because I misread the bag or the bag was mislabeled. I thought I grabbed a one gram bag, but I grabbed a three gram b- bag. So I ate somewhere between 1.52 grams of mushrooms and then got Dude, on the stage. classic experience when you would accidentally take way more than you were yeah. intending. Like, it's like, it's so funny because I think especially with psychedelics, it can be so... Like, when is it going to kick in? Like, because sometimes it's like, whoa, that kicked in really fast. And other times it's like, I feel like two hours have gone by. And I don't feel anything. And then and it's similar with, you know, how people get in that mindset of like, oh, maybe I just didn't take enough. I, like, I should just take a little more. And then it all hits you at once later. Uh, yes. I <laughs> Deep empathy for this experience. And I'm sure many listeners in this category of people who do these things can relate. But OK, so you're on like three times the amount of mushrooms that you're planning to be on. And you're at an open mic. Yeah. So like I I'm I'm too high. I get on stage. I have like whatever set. It's at some open mic when I was like fucking two years into comedy. And so mm-hmm. I just have like whatever a bad set. And then I um I go to, I think about going to another show. I'm waiting to get get on this other show and I'm pretty fucking high already. And then mm-hmm. I decide like, okay, I gotta go. I I leave, I go home. When I get home, I'm already like pretty fucking high and I decide like, well, mm-hmm. Since I'm so high, I'm just chilling by myself in my place. My roommates are maybe home. I might have had the place myself, but I lived on the, I was on the top floor. So like no one else is on the top floor. I'm like, I'm just going to fucking go balls deep on this trip. Like Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on two grams of mushrooms. I'm fucking high right now. And this, I'm pretty sure was the first time I've taken mushrooms. So I eat four more grams. Um, Whoa! Okay, so you were like, you know what? I'm already here. I don't want to be in this like middle ground thing. I just want to yeah. go into the deep end, dude. That is I'm exactly how I feel about house parties, like because it's like a middle energy thing. Because like, I want to be either laying down or I want to be on like ten drugs thrashing to Skrillex in the Sahara tent. You know, like I, yeah. like that's, but but okay. So <laughs> that is, that's really funny because I feel like so many people would have just been like, this is making me feel weird. I just need to like not get at it. Like, uh, like the, <laughs> like the thought process of like, you know what? I'm just going to do way more now. Like that yeah, is very I was like, funny. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to get high now. I think, okay. I don't know if I ate four right away. I think I ate maybe two grams right away and then ate two more later. Um, mm-hmm. But I ended up totally eating in total eating six. But I mm-hmm. so I ate more. That's insane. And then what I did is I took like a cloth and I put it over my face and I just like laid there. And I had this whole experience of like at this point in my life, I was like working very hard and not sleeping. How old and were you? I was like, yeah, like maybe 23, maybe 24. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, early 20s. Like I feel like everyone's early 20s is just like, what's going on? What the fuck? Yeah, I'm just I just start like tripping and I am having this moment where I'm like going very introspective and I'm kind of learning. It feels like my body's showing me what happens when I uh, when I sleep and why sleep's Mm -hmm. important. I can feel like my Mm -hmm. sinus is clearing and like my body relaxing, my ears opening and like it was like this is the healing that happens when you sleep and this is why sleep is important. Um, And and I've recently learned about this thing called yoga nidra, which is like rest without sleep. But you get similar to like deep sleep rest. So I was like, maybe I was in some state like that. And then after I went through this whole like my whole catalog of all these different interactions I had with my parents and how all these times they put their own insecurities and angers and fears onto me and Mm -hmm. my the mushroom trip was being like, none of these are yours. All these things you're insecure about, all these things that you're afraid of, all these reasons you, like I was doing, I went out to acid previously, why I would feel so paranoid. None of that's yours. Someone gave you that and you can let that stuff go. And I had mm-hmm. this huge moment of like self-acceptance and like self-love that I didn't know was possible on drugs. And that mm-hmm. was the first mushroom trip. And since then, mushrooms have always been this like education healing thing for me. And so I like, yeah, uh, that was that was the first real good trip that I worked through mm-hmm. it. How, I love how, that what, one of your first conclusions from that trip was I should sleep more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah, I love what more. literally what, you were like, yo, dude, like. I just did mushrooms and I learned so much about life. Like, yo, have you heard of this thing called sleep? 
Yeah, I gotta put you to on be... it. I gotta put you on this thing called sleep, bro. It's <laughs> fucking crazy. Like I love that. Like like all this stuff, and you're like, yeah. And then I realized that I should sleep. So I should <sighs> sleep. Real base shit. But it's like no, it's but, true, man. But bunch no, you, bunch of motherfuckers definitely... out there not sleeping. You gotta be out there no, fucking it's... getting your eight, getting your eight every night. It's act no, it's so true. I prioritize my sleep over anything, and I think in my early twenties, I definitely had this. I went through that cringe idea where I was like, no, but I'm different. Like I don't need sleep because I'm different for some reason, which I'm not, you know. And yeah. and I think like I was even more of a workaholic then than. I am now and so it was just constantly like yeah whatever like i'll sleep when i'm dead like work, 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 work. and then not realizing that so much of my like basically so much of my feeling bad and what was because of that and so many of my negative thoughts about myself and my life were just like i mean they were they were true at the time but they were exacerbated by a lack of sleep and uh that's uh, that's interesting that you say mushrooms is like this educational experience for you because i actually have mm -hmm. the exact same relationship with uh, mushrooms versus acid like acid to me is like party drug and then shrooms to me is like deep introspection which is why i don't do shrooms anymore i haven't done them in a well i'll do like the little microdose ones uh but in general i feel like i'm I just don't really like shrooms anymore because of how introspective it is. And like, I already do that enough. <laughs> uh, and I prefer to do that shit on, I, and like, I actually prefer to introspect on ketamine, uh, but get in, getting into that later. But, uh, cause I feel like I've had some of the best trips of my life on shrooms, but more often than that, I've just had, you know, just unwanted deep introspection. And, and I think it's related to like just the early twenties introspection. Um, but, but in general, I feel like now I'm like, you know what? Shrooms, I don't think I need to, I don't think I need to introspect more. I, I, I'm already doing the acid. Like, I, I feel like I just know what my limits are with acid and like, okay, this is like, I just feel very comfortable with it in a similar way where people are, can be comfortable with their drinking where they're like, oh yeah, I know that like, you know, two drinks is my limit. And that if I space out each drink with like a water, then I'm da -da -da. like with acid, I'm just like, yep. If I'm going to a festival, I'll start with a quarter tub like here. Then I'll, in three hours later, I'll do this. I'm going to pack some like blueberries and, and tangerines and like weird spray shit to make myself feel good while I'm like having this trip. I know that, you know, this is going to be how long the come up is. I know I'm going to be high for this long. I know that I'm going to be coming down all fucking day because people are like how long is it and it really it's all day like people will be like oh well, you know it, it's it's all day because it's like you don't really stop having the trip trip effects until you go to sleep i mean i actually um i got actually too into doing psychedelics too regularly at berkeley to where i actually um ended up getting this thing called hppd for a year it's called, i don't remember what it stands for but essentially it's like you're just tripping at a low level constantly so let's oh, say like a f yeah, yeah yeah um or and it was like very very low and um you know like that was back when i was uh super manic like super undiagnosed bipolar so um i had like a basically had like a really long manic episode where i think it's i think it started where um me and my ex-boyfriend at the time we did orange teslas do you know what that those are no what's it like it's, it's a type of uh, ecstasy, ecstasy i'm assuming yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. and it, um and yeah it, it, you know abgs know what it is because abgs love orange tesla but well but, i just um, know there was always it would be like a pressed symbol on a pill and then there would be the color pill you got like yellow Bart Simpson's blue yep. Mushabisi's like it was Yellow just Snapchat. Be, yeah. yeah and, exactly yeah yeah yeah, no, yeah the, and then it's so, gone like now it's like Tesla Snapchat like it's past my era and the new new logos no, I don't that know. didn't exist I don't when know. I was just a kid. like oh yeah it's like oh yeah the white TikTok Claude Bear headed blue eyes dragon pair pig from yeah, South yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yeah okay sure um but you know i ended up getting that hppd thing um which i ended up just teaching me like i just got super into studying drugs at berkeley and because also the professors who were teaching classes about drugs like they had open office hours and they were um like it was just funny because the professors they had to be professional so they would like go up and teach and they're just like yeah and you know according to sources um the experience tends to be like this and it's just like okay so you're doing a lot of drugs got it um yeah, yeah, yeah. and and in their office hours that's when we could like get into it because like no one was around and i'd be like so did you and they were just like yeah how do you think i wrote this entire fucking book because i was on acid the entire time I was I was on acid, I was um but 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 like yeah that that week where i had a where i, I think i was just manic for like two weeks so 
I uh, so it's like me and my ex we did orange Teslas. It's just a really intense. It's just a really intense ecstasy um, to Jack U. That's Skrillex and Diplo together back when they were doing like a Jack U thing. And um, I remember it was so exciting. It was like New Year's Eve. It was uh, New York. Uh, yeah, it was. So it was like you know also New Year's like a New York thing. And um, and I remember being like, whoa, that was so awesome. But like immediately after, uh, we didn't even sleep. We like you know I was like, oh my god, like Skrillex and Diplo, and they brought out Missy Elliott too. And I was like, whoa, Yo, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, and then my um and my ex who I was dating at the time um he didn't do uh the orange Teslas because he uh has epilepsy or like ha- yeah he has epilepsy so he didn't want to trigger so he did acid instead so both of us were having this totally different experience where like he was on acid and I was on Molly but but we converged when Missy Elliott came out like he was like whoa and I was like Ugh. and then you know, Missy Elliott comes out and suddenly like even though we're both in like different spheres of our own druggies we come back and we're like Missy Elliott and then so you know the power of Missy Elliott you know brought us back together um not in the relationship though but like uh but then immediately after <laughs> we um um, so we stayed up all night to catch a flight to Paris that we had um, to meet our other friend. And so then we are like, then we're like in Europe. And then, of course, one of the first things we do is, uh, well, well, I hate museums. I just hate museums. And but of course, they were like, we should go see the Louvre. And in my mind, I was like, oh, the only way I'll enjoy this is if I'm on something. And so we all decided to. And so like, you know. Having not slept, you know, it's like orange Tesla, flight to Paris. Okay, let's all do acid at the Louvre. And then I ended up getting kicked out of the Louvre because I had a, me- cause, uh, yeah. You had a mental mm-hmm. breakdown of the Louvre? Uh, yeah, actually. Uh, but, uh, but well, were you like just like crying and screaming, look at the Mona Lisa and be like, this bitch is fake. <laughs> do you do the, okay, the so- plane thing? That motherfucker right there is not real. <laughs> yeah, no, like, like, thank you for, like, okay, here's, so here's what happened. So, yeah, we're all in the Louvre and we're doing like the Louvre shit. And, you know, instead of making, instead of the acid making me like the museum, it just made me hyper fixate on how much I don't like museums. And then, mm. um, and then so I was like, okay, I'm going to go to the bathroom really quick. So I was with my ex boyfriend and my other, um, guy friends so they couldn't come to the bathroom with me it was just me and these two dudes and then so i go to the girls bathroom and then i literally couldn't figure out how to get out of the girls like it was just <laughs> no and then so so you know i go in the girls bathroom, no, and I get lost in a bathroom. <laughs> no and i couldn't i couldn't get out of the bathroom and so so it was like this thing where it's like i exit the stall and there's only one exit door right there's only one exit door and yeah. so i open it and then it but it leads like a like a supply closet and i close that uh, and then oh, i'm no, like where's dude, the other I'm door the so i open the other door and it's a toilet again and i was like what's happening like i just couldn't and i was like freaking out because i like literally could not <laughs> get out of the I was like I was like I was like fuck I'm on acid by myself and like they don't know and they're probably like da 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 and I was and I just was having this re- I was like fuck dude I'm trapped in the bathroom and then um so I was just in this cycle of like opening doors and like and like and I was like I don't know 20 or something at the time so I'm just like ah oh! and then I just ended up uh so then I just ended up crying I was like sitting on the floor and like crying me like I can't get out of I can't get out of the bathroom I'm gonna die <laughs> like I literally was like I want this trip to end I can't get out of the bathroom on the loop and then um um, then one of the one of the people who was working there um, like came into the restroom and like saw me and and just kind of put put it together and uh, was just like yeah you you should you gotta leave. go they yeah. wasn't even like are you okay yeah. he was like listen bitch you gotta get the fuck no, out of no no it was literally right just like you you're clearly on drugs and you gotta go and then and then right after that of course we go to Amsterdam and we do the fucking um, not the 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 rock shrooms that they sell over the counter and in the stores it was like they, they were like well it's not like the other shrooms because it's the rock that's underneath it's the root and i was like i don't know i haven't read a book in a long time just give it to me and yeah. um and then you know have a really good trip on that in amsterdam because i was like whoa all these tall people are in these small buildings this is very funny and and so like being in amsterdam but then you know of course uh yeah so that was a lot of drugs in a row and not a lot of sleep and then so then the next day waking up in amsterdam i was like hey um why haven't these worn off yet Mm." and then my ex also was going through a similar thing like his didn't last um as long and also he said something um i was just like this feels a little racist. No, it wasn't. But he basically was like, fuck, I'm tripping. And like, sorry, Melissa, like, you know, I, 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 I think you're beautiful. But like right now, you kind of look like that weird Asian alien from that thing that we watched. And I was just like, what, dude? So like, um, so we're both like, like, we're both scared. Uh, 
it, we were just in our like little hotel room in Amsterdam or whatever, and like both of us are like, wait, why do we still feel like on drugs? Like even though we're not on drugs, and we're both like scared and like scared of each other. Um, and he was like, he was like, you look like a weird alien, and I was just like. You look fine to me. I don't know. Um, and uh, and then you know his went away, and then mine like like basically if if trip if let's say tripping is like a ten, like I would yeah. just I, I would have like low level like on and off tripping, um, and it lasted for an entire year, and so like. Uh, j- just like little things that I would only see when I was tripping, I would just see normally uh, every day for a year. Just like re- and re- like v- it was very subtle. Like uh, for example, like the way that people walk. Like when I'm tripping, the way that people walk, I perceive it as like they're as like like you know depth perception and shadows. Like they just look weightless while they're walking. And and so when I so that was. That, that would always trip me out so i would just try not to like look at people walking um and of course i was like free i was like freaking out right and so i was you know going to like my professor's office hours and being and i also like didn't know if i would get in trouble for telling a doctor that i did drugs so i immediately i just went to my professor's office i was like what and he was like oh hey don't worry calm down there's this thing called hppd and like da 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 and then i looked it up i was like oh, okay okay like this I'm not is the your only drug person. professor who like diagnosed you with this HPPT uh, yeah. colon slash um, <laughs> yeah 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 um, um, and then yeah. I and then I ended up like and then it was like okay well does it go away eventually he's just like yeah just like you know don't do psychedelics for a while and I was like yeah no that's yeah I'm not going to I'm not going to do that and then um what's funny is that like while I was having these like 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 and my friends knew I was freaking out about it so they would do all these things to try and make me feel better about it and like joke about it um and it ended up being really fun uh where where it's like but but like little things right so you know me so uh, I think that happened when I was like 20 so by the time I was 21 we go to Mexico and we're doing like me and my friends were doing like the ATV shit and um so I'm like driving the ATV and then like while I'm driving it, I suddenly get like a weird, like trippy, like flashback thing, and I was like, "Whoa, dude!" Um, but I mean, it was fine. It was like a super safe. <laughs> yeah, it was a really safe environment. No, but it was it was just like me in an ATV, like on dirt and stuff. Um, the worst yeah, yeah. though was having having to get my pap smear and then having like a little thing happen. Um, Jesus, that- that's fucked. What while you were high on drugs getting a pap smear? That's yeah, well, like I mean, not, not like not the ideal way to get that. <laughs> oh no 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 and it was also my first um yeah so my very first pap smear i ended up having like a trailing like not like 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 a slight basically like i like i, I like very mild tripping symptoms for for an entire year and then that was and you know when you turn 21 or after you have sex for the first time that's when you're supposed to get your first pap smear and i was like okay, okay. well i just i just have to do it so then so uh so so i get in there and i'm like ah oh, fuck it's happening again and the dude um thankfully the the gynecologist or what or the OBGYN was like really nice but here's what he does so it's like he, a I'm, bad I'm clearly, trip setter he's oh, he's yeah. like testing your pussy and he's being like dude, well, is this weirding was, you out yeah. <laughs> he's like showing you weird pictures and shit like this could be in your pussy right now that's crazy right no 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 he did do, okay so he was actually really good and he was a really good trip sitter but he did do, accidentally do some shit that was really freaky when while trying to be a good person uh, so i don't blame him for anything but i was clearly very nervous and he was like hey do you want me to just you know explain like what's gonna happen Does that make you feel better i was like yeah and then he goes like okay well the thing is first we're gonna you know put this clamp up your vagina and then he like he reaches into a drawer and he pulls out this like ju- like like he just pulls out like a giant clamp like this and the and then so as soon as he pulls it out he was like we're just gonna use this to clamp your vagina oh wrong one sorry that's the extra large one let's go into this <laughs> and so he like literally <laughs> it's like a fucking seinfeld episode dude he literally he accidentally pulls out this claw it's like kang, yeah kang, kang. like no oh sorry sorry we only use that for people with the huge pussies yeah let's yeah. find something that fits more your size no like literally like and like and i was just like what like that moment of like all the emotions i felt in that like half second i was just like you just took me on a roller coaster because he literally pulls out this like giant clamp, right? Like yeah. it, in my mind, it looked, it seemed like a baseball bat. He was like, "Yeah, we're just gonna use this thing to like keep you up." And, oh, whoop, not that one. Uh, and then I was like, "Okay, yeah, it's that's cool." Um, and then and then the entire time, like, so you know, he has a clamp, and so I'm like laying there, and then like, and this guy is just like in there right and like trying to make really nice small talk with me while it's happening to like distract me so literally um uh 
like he had to do this thing where he like reached into my vagina without the clamp, but just and like just to feel around the walls or whatever. Or, or I mean, maybe he was just doing that because because he felt. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, but, he was he was he was free balling. He's like, yeah, you know, sometimes I reach in a little further than I should. He's yeah. just being just enough a creep. He can't call him out on it. Dude, and, and, and then, um, so literally he's, like, his hands are, like, in my vagina, and so it's, like, and, uh, and, like, he's, like, feeling around for, like, something, I don't know, like, cancer or whatever, um, <laughs> but he's, like, literally, like, you know, it, I, I felt like his entire, it just felt like his entire hand was in there, except for his stuff, because, and he, so he was, like, literally, like, just in there, and then he's just, like, so, like, what are you studying at school? Oh, that sounds like a great major, like, yeah, like, are you, da 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 and just making that easy small talk, and I was just sort of, like, how okay, am I in this situation? Question, quick question. You're getting a pap smear. Some dude takes a clamp, pries your vagina open. He's in there with a flashlight. He's holding his finger up to your queef. Whatever's going down for the whole pap smear situation. Do you prefer the small talk or do you want just straight silence? Is it like an Uber ride where you're like, I don't want you to talk, dude. Just take me I where needed I need the to the small go? talk. No, I for sure. Like, uh, so totally opposite Uber ride. I'm just sort of like, just pretend I'm dead. You're that you're transferring a corpse. Um, yeah. uh, but Unless that would make you want to talk to the corpse more. But anyway, um, for, for, you know, for your own personal reasons. But anyway, so back to this dude. Uh, no, small talk was very good. It, it actually really helped me um, not freak out. But but yeah, you know, acting old tripping. Yeah, I just went on a really long tangent uh, for that. But have you, um, well, I guess when was your first like really fun trip? One where you're mm. like, wh- where you're like, yeah, acid is a party drug. Totally. So I think my best trips I've had on psychedelics are um, that actually I just missed this trip uh, because I had to my September was just too busy. I could not go on this one this year, but a bunch of my buddies um, pretty routinely go to a cottage up in uh, Muskoka, which is like. I want to say two hours, two and a half hours, maybe three hours uh, outside of Toronto. Muskoka mm-hmm. is like a known to be like a nicer lake area. There's a lot of like rich cabins uh, uh, or cottages up in that area. Um, my buddy's cottage, not so fancy. Toilet doesn't work. Kind of a rundown little place. He actually, it was like basically condemned and him and his brother went up there. Uh, it was, it's hand it's like within the family, but I think it's beyond just him and his brother who have like ownership over it. Um, Mm -hmm. So they went and they just like clean this thing, the fuck up, gutted it out, like made it so you could actually live in it and go up every year and like kind of keep it together, keep making it better. Um, But 10 of us went up there. So it was all comics. There was five of us from Toronto, five of us from Montreal. That sounds Uh, so fun. Oh, it was such a blast. We actually had like buzz- every person from Toronto had like another version. Like one of our guys who came up, he was uh, Persian. There was another Persian guy who came up from um, from uh, uh, Montreal. And then like there was a version of me that there was like this other dude who kind of had like an afro. Like we all had like oh, bizarre ver- versions of Oh my God, of I ourself. totally thought you said, um, yeah. at first I thought you said everybody had their own Persian. And so no, no, I was, I was no, like, no. Oh, okay, cool. So everyone, and I was like, okay, yeah, cool. And everyone Classic brought Persian their own slave. Persian yeah. friend. Um, you bring yeah, your own I'm, Persian slave. You fucking, they, they whip fo- up food and then you keep them in their I'm Persian I'm so cage. proud of myself for like <laughs> not, um, no, no, there was a Persian guy who I was having like toxic sex with. And, um, in a recent moment of weakness, I was still strong enough to deny him. And so I'm, I've, I'm like, yeah. I'm growing up. I know that was I didn't end up too. hooking up with that but, dude who who I hate, but the sex is really good. But anyway, so you yeah, having a, we would go wait to a this second. Uh, oh, it was was it all dudes? Yeah, all dudes. It's all okay, dudes. Okay, cool. Because I was gonna we, ask like, what was yeah, the boys fucking time, dude? Like well, I didn't just, know if just you were fucking the fucking guys hanging out. No, no, yeah, just yeah, okay. the guys hang out. But everyone had like even my buddy Cameron. There's this guy John. They're both like bald and have glasses, and they're both very like oh, like there. At one point, one guy was walking with a stick, and he was like, oh, this is a good walking stick. He's like, you want to use it? And he's like, oh no, it's fine. And they're like very like both very nice, and it was so funny to watch them like be nice to each other. But um. But we go, we would go up and all do like psychedelics, like literally like eat a bunch of mushrooms. And then we would go on this hike. It's like a 9K hike, uh, which for Americans, I think that's like uh, five miles or six miles. And I it's don't not fucking know. So is this something you do a, every year or like regularly with this group? We've done it two years in a row. I Hell couldn't yeah. go this year, mm. um, but it's it's a, yeah, it's it's just a sick time. But we would like eat mushrooms and think of just like hanging out with your 
best boys high on mushrooms in the woods and we're all just like laughing so hysterically mm-hmm. hard Everyone's and the thing is you're also all wavelength. comics right because like yeah. that's that's a huge important part where it's like oh like i'm here's like oh i'm tripping with my like deep uh, i love them but they're not fun you know your friends who aren't funny but you still love and then yeah. there's tripping with your funny friends and then you just can't breathe the whole time we're, um, like laughing so hysteric like i don't mm-hmm. know if i've laughed that hard in a can in that pe- like in like we were there i was there for four days if i've laughed that much in a four-day period ever before in my life oh uh, then you gotta come to vegas with me and brad and we yeah, and, and, have, and yeah, that sounds like off. a challenge no that literally like if like you need to come to vegas with me brad and santi that literally sounds like a challenge to me of just like oh i'm gonna ma- we're gonna make you laugh even harder and for even longer and then you're gonna say that was the best trip <laughs> um yeah. but uh what have you ever fucked on psychedelics? And I guess, what do you think is the best drug to fuck on? Mm, like, I mean, everyone says ecstasy. Ecstasy is going to give you like a such as like a physical stimulation. And like, to be the honest, benefit- I disagree. I don't think the best sex is on ecstasy. I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying it's the best, but I'm saying that is like if you were to ask the layman, they would say ecstasy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, the the new the normies, drug sex yeah. havers, you know, because us we're the expert drug user sex havers, not for not for the average mortal who only has a little bit of sex on a little bit of drugs. We are the superior people who have a lot of sex and a lot of drugs. But anyway, yeah. So what are you saying? <laughs> but yeah, I think. Uh, I wouldn't pick any psychedelic because I feel like psychedelics, they get Agree. much too introspective. Um, some downers can be good. I'm not, but I don't like downers in general. I don't mm-hmm. like really like ketamine. I don't like codeine. I've never taken an opioid. I mean, I don't know if ketamine counts as an opioid. Um, but it's a, I think it's a dissociative and I, I actually uh, only like one specific type of ketamine. Mm-hmm. All the other ketamine I dislike. Yeah. But for sex, I get I would probably pick like Coke or ecstasy just because they make you horny as fuck. And mm. so that like you're like with Coke, you're doing when you're on Coke, you're always fucking horny, which is like <laughs> such an oxymoron because you it ruins your fucking dick. You can't. Yeah, like, no, because I was wondering, like, um, like, yeah, that tends to happen. Oh, right, yeah, like, yeah, like totally no. When happens. I've had sex, on, I mean, like you know, I don't have an issue, but typically it's like, oh, it, it's like, uh, like very often I've been with a dude and we're both on drugs and we're and he's like on one of those and it's like, yeah, he's super horny, but the drugs are making his brain horny and his dick just not like it just doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's why uh, probably the best drug to have sex on is Viagra. That's the fucking <laughs> wait. Do you have any? Shit. Uh, advice for getting it hard while you're on a drug that makes your dick soft. Like just, I yeah, just take take Viagra, take a fucking okay. You, yeah, so just like, another drug. Got take it. Take another drug to counteract the drug, and then your heart will bear the weight. That's what will happen. <laughs> You'll just fucking take it on the on the tubes on your uh, on your arteries, your veins. Those will what you, something's got to give. There's, no, 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 you're no exactly. There's no there's one. no free lunch. So what would you exactly. say is the worst drug to have sex on worst drug to have sex on let me go through like this quick rolodex in my head i think uh it might be now because acid and mushrooms can be good i'm i'm completely forgetting weed too like if you cannot be parent like i have a bad thing of just getting paranoid when i get high and so if i cannot be paranoid it can be very good if i am paranoid it's the worst because then i just can't get my dick going because i'm so in my own head Oh, Um, yeah. I mean, all that shit is mental anyway. Like anything that like any sort of stress or discomfort just completely ruins shit down there. You know, like no, like even for um, like and like from a girl perspective, it's like, oh, like um, if I am not feeling it like my body, like my, my vagina, like literally won't even open up properly like it'll act like it'll actually really hurt um, because my vagina like it's like, okay, my vagina is like. Not, not doing the thing. Yeah, whereas like my brain is horny, but it's like, oh, my vagina is like literally dry. It's not like opening up correctly um, for the, and so then it's like, so then it's like hurting. Um, I mean, weed is the best drug for me to have sex on personally. Like I like, I think I've just like, because every time I'm coming down or in the past, every time I would come down from something, I'm like, hey, I need to figure out a way to like fuck on this. So like mm-hmm. at this point in my life, you know, now that I'm 30, did I mention that I'm 30? But, you know, at this point in my life, I have fucked and masturbated on like every single one of the drugs that I have done or, or I'm like willing to do currently. Mm-hmm. And um, like we like 
It's a com- my perfect combo is a is like a weed ketamine combination because um, for whatever reason, like I just I, I said, I've said this before on the podcast, but I nut ten times harder on weed for some reason, like both in sex and during ma- like it just makes it like I, I get no downsides from it when it comes to sex. It just everything is positive where it's like everything feels better. I'm way more turned on like I like it's it just is like, yeah, this is awesome versus, um you know, like Molly. Like, I feel like it's like what having sex on Molly. I'm more focused on the fact of like how good the Molly feels. And it's and it's much mm. more like I don't feel as many. um It's like, yeah, I'm horny, but that's not the dominant feeling. Like the dominant feeling is actually the Molly and just like the touching in the indi- and in, like in the intimacy or whatever. But like when it ca- when it came to actually orgasming, I didn't think that my orgasm or any of my orgasms on Molly have been particularly stronger or different from just normal orgasms versus like, you know, on weed and especially the killer like weed cake combo, it like shoots out of me like a laser and, you know, penetrates to the earth's core, comes out the other side and kills an orphan. Uh, yeah, no, just kidding. That's a fucking uh, good orgasm right there. Yeah, yeah, Dude, yeah. And like, it's so uh, good it had to take a life. That wasn't for free. Yeah, some no, had like, to die. So- <laughs> somebody had to, you know, like one, one must die so the other can come. That yeah. is. Yes. the rule of the nut cinematic universe <laughs> um but but like i like i feel like i get super horny on ketamine but it's really hard to come however when i'm having sex on ketamine or masturbating on ketamine it feels like i'm edging the whole time and like personally like i uh i really like edging like i think when it comes to having sex my preferred way of having sex is to edge for as long as possible because mm-hmm. i actually find the experience of like both people edging and like trying not to cut like that is like what Re- like at least at this point in my life that's like what gets me like really excited as just this battle of like oh we're edging we can't be edging we're, nah, 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 as opposed to like you know doing like five rounds or whatever um so that's why like the weed ketamine combo i'm like okay cool like you know weed makes me super horny and ketamine makes me super horny uh but i can't come on just ketamine so or, or it's really hard uh, but so with the, so it's like the, it's, it's a combo it's a power combo but yeah but yeah, okay. and versus other times, like having sex on psychedelics, I'm just like, hmm, maybe we just won't make eye contact right now because this is yes, a little worst weird. drug. I would probably put one of the psychedelics on. Yeah, there. shrooms. Like just, I think shrooms. Yeah. For me. Oh yeah. yeah. You know, you're probably 100 percent right on shrooms because yeah. shrooms also like unless you do the proper steps, like I always put my mushrooms. My buddy taught me this. You put them in orange juice, breaks down like the stuff that fuck that fucks up your stomach. Um, oh, I didn't know uh, so, that. Yeah, the acidity, it, it makes it so it's not as rough on your stomach. And there's some other shit you could do, like shroom tea is another way to do it. Yeah, no, but it's funny, all this shit where it's just like, hey, that poison that you're ingesting that your body's going to reject, here's some yeah. other shit you can do, yeah. To, to make it so it's not as brutal on your body. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if you just eat shrooms straight up, for one, they like taste bad, they give you gut rot, and then you're fucking and then you're tripping. Like That's just like... I guess if it was with the right person and you were both very, very comfortable with each other, that could yeah. be great. But if you're just tripping and you're with like a one night stand, I couldn't picture something that would be like less fun. And mm-hmm. Just that's not how I'd want to spend my trip. Um, but yeah, so I would say like best for me, probably Coke or Ecstasy, because those are just like, even though I'm like very over Coke, I will admit that Coke is like, it's there for a reason. Like people like to do it because it, does certain things oh i have um i have definitely had really fun and great sex on coke like like i think literally uh me and this um this dude that i used to hook up with in new york like one of our classic you up texts was like yeah want to do coke and fuck it's like yeah yeah, i want to like you know it's like you want to do coke and fuck yeah um wait wait so which of the drugs makes you the softest Oh, I mean, like, because I know it's like I know there's like whiskey dick and like all that, but like, is there is it all kind of equally difficult? Coke and, coke and ecstasy fuck up your dick pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Um, mushrooms, I don't think they directly fuck up my dick, but I think because I can get so int- introspective and so like, uh, like so in my own head, that's just not sometimes the place you kind of want to be in the moment when you're fucking. You don't want to be like in this internal dialogue. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, so that could fuck up my dick, but not in the same way. Uh, where, like, I heard Percocets. Percocets apparently give you a crazy boner. They, oh, like, my God. Re- Wait, really you're reminding your- me. You just reminded me of this time that, uh, okay, okay. Actually, um, I did 
come so hard on Percocet at one time that I made an entire Comedy Central special about it. Um, oh, nice. But, uh, uh, or, or, or at least I reference it. Because, no, I, I remember specifically, um, I forgot, I think me and my friend were at a concert. And then, uh, I mean, I had leftover Percocet from when I got LASIK. Because, like, basically when I got, uh, I got LASIK a couple years ago. And they sent my, they kept sending my painkillers to the wrong pharmacy. And then so I ended up just getting just going to all the pharmacies and just getting all of them. And I was like, sweet. Like, what? Like, I'll just have extra perks and Vicodin for, uh, you know, when I'm in pain later or something. Um, but, but, like, we had just gone to a concert, uh, and my friend wanted to try it. Per- and I was like, yeah, I have some from that thing that I did. Anyway, mm-hmm. so then I go home for the concert, like, you know, normal uh, smoke weed to, like, try and fall asleep. And, um, and, and then... I don't know. I guess maybe I was like, I know you're not supposed to drink on that shit, but like, um, I remember like vaguely just having like, su- like jerking off and having like such a specific intense orgasm. Um, and I didn't even, and I, and, and then I woke up the next morning. I didn't, I didn't remember that I'd done this to a poem on my phone that I had written about how good that orgasm was. Like literally, no, like I, like I, like I, I opened my phone the next morning. I don't remember writing it, but, um, the very beginning of the note on my phone is just like, you know, I know I'm not going to remember this, but I have to write this down for my records. Like I just had possibly the most intense orgasm, like, oh, like where, um, where I, I genuinely, genuinely like felt as if god himself sent jesus as like a spirit and then jesus like entered through my vagina and like literally did some and like was doing like a whole holy ceremony in there and then exited out in a burst of um like violin sounds and liquid honey and all of this uh sh- oh my god oh my god we're almost out of time the producer is letting me know that right now and i've just been so i mean i've been really into this conversation so i completely lost track of time which is also common on psychedelics which i am not on but people typically think i am on drugs get because of my personality i feel like we covered a lot of psychedelics and maybe uh like our next uh, solo app we get into some more of our drug spectrum from here uh, oh yeah yeah oh yeah. you know you know how much you know how much i love being on the spectrum yeah we'll get into more of the spectrum stuff uh and guys if you are listening right now go make sure you check us out on youtube you can always check out the video version at thank you come again pod where we're also on thank you can also find us on instagram at thank you come again pod uh, and if you want to find myself chaderena you can find me at c-h-e-d-u-r-e-n-a on all social platforms chaderena.com for tour dates uh big date coming up i'm going to be at the wilbur in boston early 2024 uh we're going to be in where else is coming up uh we got a bunch of stuff around new york so we got connecticut we got um um, springfield massachusetts and we also got new jersey so you can go find me at all those locations and mel uh let them know where they can find you Dude, it's funny because every time you do your outro, I, I, I'm just reminded of that Animaniac song that's like Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Indianapolis, Indiana, and Columbus is the capital of Ohio. There's Montgomery, Alabama, south of hell, and I'm going to Jesus Christ, I remember that shit. Anyway, Animaniac is d- awesome. Whoa, <laughs> holy shit. You pulled something out of this deep in your cerebellum for that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, be, because I remember they had the songs about... To, to help you remember all the names of the cities and, and shit like that. And so when you're doing that, I just get that, like, that anim- that Animaniacs where he's like, yeah, Che, he's going to New, New Brunswick and New Jersey. Da, 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 da. Uh, mm-hmm. But you can find me at Sailor Mel 69420 on all socials. Um, I'm going to spell two. I've never done that before, and I'm going to prove that I know how to read. S-A-I-L-O-R-M-E-L 69420. Holy shit, that took all of my brain cells. I'm going to fall. I'm going to pass out after this. But yeah, you can find me there on uh, TikTok, Instagram. You, I think on YouTube, I'm actually still Melissa Ong69420. You, you'll figure it out. Just look for the slutty Asian girl with pink hair. Oh, fuck. There's a lot of those. Just look for me, okay? You, if you're listening to this podcast, you probably know who I am. Um, and do not forget to rate us five stars on everything, please. Um, just click the link in either of our bios, the bit.ly link. It'll just automatically take you into your app so you don't have to do a bunch of, you don't have to do a bunch of shit like download like it's literally just a one button thing it's much easier than you think please click the link and rate us five stars and do not forget to like follow subscribe on youtube and um yeah i mean i just can't wait to keep talking about drugs honestly it's gonna be killer well guys thank you for coming to the pod and thank you come again thank you come again bye
We want to hear from you, so leave us a voice message at sayhi.chat slash tycapod. Again, that's sayhi.chat at tycapod. And make sure that your message is one minute or less. You can ask us a question, share what you think is cringe, tell us a story, whatever you like. And if you do, we may play it right here on the pod. We're going to leave the link for you right below.